I'm going to turn a tool handle for my new weeding stick that I've been working on here. Um, yeah, if you want to see how I make this, check out the other video I posted up where I forged this, and um, that might be interesting to you. But this video is about wood turning, and I'm going to make a tool handle, simple little project. There are quite a few little steps in it. Um, I am a little out of practice. I haven't been on my lathe in quite some time. So this is a good kind of project that will get me back up to speed. I'm going to use this little Delta MIDI lathe here. Uh, I love that for small projects. Um, so first thing, I need a piece of stock. I was digging around. I was hoping to find a piece of ash or maple maybe in my supplies. I didn't. I found this old scrap piece of oak, at least I think it is. It's hard as a rock because it's old. Hopefully I can turn this. Uh, we will see. Um, first thing, I'm going to cut a chunk of this. I want about an 8-inch handle, I think. I'm going to cut about a 9-inch piece of, off of here. Um, give me a little bit to play with. All right. So here I have a 9-inch piece of oak. It's roughly an inch and a half by inch and three-quarters square or rectangle. Um, First thing I need to do is find the centers or something close to center, and that is done just easily by drawing a mark across corner to corner on each end. I don't have to be perfect. I I'm gonna uh, you know turn this round based on whatever center that I set up on the lathe, so it doesn't really have to be perfect. But this just helps me kind of get things aligned. And actually, I'm going to do something a little unique. I'm, I'm going to put I'm going to put one end of this without turning it round first. I'm going to put one end of this in my little four jaw chuck over here, uh, just because I'm going to drill this thing by hand on the lathe, and the four jaw chuck holds it really nice when I have a square end like this to turn for the strength, you know, that I need. Um, not to have it not slip and so forth on the lathe. And I'll show you how that's going to work. Anyway, here's my marks. One end, the other end. The other end's all stained and everything, and that's kind of going to be waste anyway. I'll shape that and shave it off. Just a little bit of a, a divot. I'll mark this one too here. All right, that just helps me align things on the lathe. Let's put this in. Okay, what I'm going to do to get this in the lathe, I'm going to put the one end on my live center and run that up into my chuck. Um, and just let this tailstock with the live center sort of hold it here while I get this tightened on this end. Uh, this is one of those little chucks that you use, you know, lever bars to tighten it. So it can be a little, you know, a little odd to, to do. But I like it. They're simple. They're small. They work great for these little lays. See how that works? The little chuck holding a square piece of wood works pretty well. That's solid. And it's close to centered. It doesn't really matter because I'm turning this round. You know, I, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna make my new center based on how this thing is spinning. Um, so let's see here. So that's centered up. I'm going to put a little pressure on this tailstock now, just a little bit, just so it stays secure there. Okay. Now what I want to do first of all is make this into a cylinder. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I think that's going to hold fine. I'm going to use a spindle roughing gouge. It's one of these deep U-shaped gouges. It's made for spindle turning. 
this tool, uh, you don't want to use it doing flat work or, or bowl turning. This is for spindle turning. Um, I'm not going to go into a whole description on that right now. So the tool rest, I want to set it so it's just at about the midpoint, maybe a little below midpoint of my uh, piece of stock. Right? This is going to cut at an angle like this, holding the tool at an angle. Make sure we're clear of the tool rest, spin that, nothing's going to hit. Okay. Yo, the other thing I could check is my speed. I want to be, I'm going to start out at a slow speed. I'm at 800 on the pulleys. There we go. There's a little wobble in this because that piece of wood is not balanced. It's not square, but that's all right. Let's see how this works. Yeah, good. Okay, so I'm going to start by rounding this end. Now, you want to use your safety gear. I should have a face mask on to do this. I am doing it without it because I want to be able to talk to the camera. But normally I would put on a full face shield. We're going to do it this way. Yeah, this is hard. I can tell right away that this oak is tough and hard. So I start at the end of the and I start taking the corners off and I cut out towards the end. You know that works? Now I have a short little tool rest, so I have to move this around quite a bit. But see, that's it. I've got the rough shape. There's a little knot in there. That's part of what I'm feeling. You know, I, I can tell when the, the tool hits something hard like that. We're going to go over here. We're going to round this off. Once we have this cylindrical, I can increase the speed. Okay. Almost got rid of all the flat sides there. Now I think I'm going to end up with a tool red or a tool handle. I want the diameter to be a little over an inch, and I am pushing an inch and three eighths right now, so I've got room to work. I want roughly eight inches, seven and a half, eight inches for my handle, and I've got that. I've got to watch this jaw here as I work. I don't want to run into that. That would be exciting. Okay. I'm going to raise the speed by changing my pulley position here with my belt. I'm going to go up to uh, 1800 RPM. There we go. Now I can really work on getting this smoother. It's really easier to turn at a higher speed. I can feel when I go past that little knot there. There we go. Now let's see, we'll clean up this a little bit. Yeah. All right. How are we doing for kind of length here? Seven and a half, eight inches. Yeah, I could take a little more. I might do that with a different tool. I hate getting in too close with this gouge to that jaw. All right. So, now I've got to think about my shape. At the front end of this, this is going to be the end out here that I'm going to drill and uh, insert my tool into. Okay, So I'm going to put a ferrule on there, and I'm going to make that ferrule out of this. Uh, it's like a brass plumbing nut. 
This is kind of a fun, simple way to do a ferrule. But what that means is I've got to turn this down to a diameter where this nut is going to fit over it. What the ferrule does on a tool handle is it helps compress and keep strength in the fibers at the end where the tool is. Uh, if you think about it, the tool is in the handle and there's leverage. And that leverage can crack and it usually starts cracking up here. That's where the ferrule comes into play and it strengthens that initial uh, force and uh, or you know counters that initial force and keeps the handle from splitting. So I've got to do some measurements here. Let's see. I've got actually two different diameters on this. I've got a little uh, end opening that's a little smaller, and that is roughly. It uh, looks like 5 sixteenths. It's really hard to see this here. No, I'm sorry, I'm looking at, uh, it's a little over a half inch. All right. The cool thing with this tool, though, you know, this caliper, is that I can just use it directly on here. I don't really have to know the measurement so much as set the caliper to it. And then the inside thread on this is three-quarter inch. So... I need a three-quarter inch step to start with. Yep. Just double checking. Measure twice, cut once. That's the rule in woodworking. So three-quarter inch. And that has to be roughly five-eighths of an inch down into the handle right so five eighths of an inch is back here I can just put that mark on here five eighths of an inch is right there and here we will do it this way so that nut I just dropped it down there that nut is going to occupy that much space on the handle I'm going to use a parting tool to set that initial depth and location on the handle using my caliper at the same time. That's it. See the caliper goes over. So that's actually a little bit larger than three quarter inches. I just enlarged this a little bit beyond my nut setting because I want a little little bit to play. I will size this down in just a minute. Now we take off the rest of this to match that diameter. Okay. There we go. Got a little taper on there. I'm going to actually, let's see, we'll back this off. Let me see how we're doing with size with this nut. Yeah, we've got plenty of material left. So right now that just barely starts. This is going to have to come down a little bit more. And the way we can size this now is put the nut over top of this um, live center. And I can hold that right there as I work and be able to get my size correct. Let's see. I gotta be careful. My room, my hands a little room here. There we are. Okay, here we go. All right. That's fitting over that. It's a little bit loose, so 
that I don't want to go any smaller than that the rest of this I'm just going to use this parting tool to do that Yeah, that's really close. And my objective here now is to get this close so that the threads of the nut will actually bite in and thread onto the wood. And this is a little tricky because it is so minute of an, an amount. Yeah, that goes just a little bit tight yet. Ah, oh, that's feeling pretty good. All right. Mm-hmm. Let me check with my caliper. That's yeah, pretty good. I'm a little bit thicker at this back end. And yeah, I'm just I am just a shave over three quarters of an inch. I got this old piece of sandpaper. We're just gonna run that on there. Sandpaper takes a little bit off too. Yeah, that's going to work. Okay, that's good. Now, like I said, that's got to go fit down on that far, and this has to be a little smaller diameter there. So, I've got to take this very end down just a touch more. And that's just a little over half inch. It's not even nine sixteenths. What I'm going to do is put this on here backwards so I can use it again to kind of fit as I go. Here's my caliper. My hands in the right position here. All right, I'm really close here. Okay, Let's see what we got. Yeah, I'm. I rounded it a little bit. I'm gonna just flatten that out just a touch. That's right. Pretty close. I need not quite square. There we go. I'm liking that. Now, let me see how we are in this direction. Have I taken off enough? My little caliper, I can also measure depth. Pretty good. I'm going to shave just inside there. Just be sure I've got enough in here.
Okay, good. So that's where my ferrule goes. That's all ready. Now I want to shape my handle. I think I want just a slight, um, what do you call it, Con convex on here. Uh, so that it's just slightly thicker in the center, tapers down a little bit towards each end. And I think I can just keep doing that with my spindle roughing gouge. You know, they call this a spindle roughing gouge, but you can do some pretty fine work with it. There we go, I like that. Taper it down this way. Now, I know you're asking, how come you're working from the center out to the ends? Well, this is a basic in wood turning and spindle turning. You always cut downhill. The fibers are running uh, basically parallel this way. And to cut them without things jamming up and catching your tool, you have to cut downhill from each side. So if I start down and come up, imagine my fingers are fibers. If I start coming uphill, I catch into those fibers and it I chips and splits. But if I'm going downhill, the fibers cut off and they leave smooth ends. So you work from the center out, cutting downhill to get smooth, nice uh, surfaces. I'm using the broad flat wing on this roughing gouge almost as you would use a skew chisel. And it's doing a nice planing cut. You want to try to do all your smoothing using your, your gouge. You know, if you use sandpaper to do it, sandpaper's not going to cut this uniformly. We'll sand it a little at the end, but we want to get our nice contour with a gouge rather than grinding away with sandpaper. We'll just run a little sandpaper on that. That's just to take splinters. There we are. Yeah, I like it. I think I want to round that little corner here just a bit. And I'm going to do that with the parting tool. Just so I don't have a sharp corner on the back end of my gouge there. There. Okay. I like that. Now, I need to drill for my rod to fit. So I want to drill to fit the uh, rod into the handle now. To achieve that, I have a chuck that's made specifically to fit in my um, lathe. And I'm going to drill this. Now, this is a 3 8 inch rod. I'm going to drill this just a touch larger, um, 2364, just a little bigger. Because I tell you, I've gotten into trouble before. If I drill a 3 8 inch hole, this is a super tight fit. You have to hammer it in. I might split that brittle wood. What happens is it's like a plunger. If you don't have any airspace and you're trying to fit your tool into the handle, it's like a plunger and you're creating pressure in there. And especially when I add a little bit of glue and you can crack your wood just putting it together. So I'm going to 
drill this 2360 force and then that'll slide in there easily and there's a little trick for how the, uh, the glue is going to secure it and you can see that a little bit later on. Put my speed down low, 500 RPM. Now I want to go three inches into this. So my little lathe here, I can turn this crank. Let's see, let me turn that so you can see my hand here. I'm turning this crank and it's driving in the bit. This only extends an inch and a half. So at a certain point, what I have to do is back it off and slide the whole tailstock closer. Got a light in my face. I'm just going slow, giving this thing time to cut. I'm seeing a little wobble here. You know what's probably happening is that my bit is following the grain of this wood and flexing this a little off-center. It's not a big deal for this kind of tool. Okay, that's an inch and a half. I'm going to back this up. I'm going to slide this in that inch and a half and then extend it another inch and a half. There we go, inch and a quarter, almost there. There, inch and a half. All right, so I got a three inch hole in there. Now I have to part this off down here and separate my handle from the waist. I'm going to support this end with my tail stock as I do that. And I have this fine bladed parting tool and I'm just going to cut right through this end. I think I'll raise my speed back up a little bit to do this. It just cuts so much smoother at a higher speed. Let's see. So that's 800 RPM. All right, here we go. That's it. There's my tool handle. I have to carve that little nub off the end there, maybe sand that a little bit. My ferrule is going to thread on there. I might have to sand that down a touch to get that to go. And then I still have to cut this off to the right length. You can see how that all happens by watching my other video. And then we're going to assemble it all. I'm going to glue my tool into the handle with some fast setting epoxy. Here's the weeding stick tool. If you want to see how to make that, watch the video on forging the weeding stick. Okay. My ferrule goes on there. This epoxy, you just mix it. 50-50, resin to hardener, more. there we go, needs to be about the right proportion, if it's a little one way or the other, that's not a big deal, and we mix that together, this is just a scrap piece of cardboard, as you can see I love Ritz crackers, now this is a uh, I think a five minute set on this epoxy, so I've got to work relatively timely with it. That's it. And the thing is, it's a little warm out here today, too, and that affects the epoxy. 
So you see I mixed it using an old nail, or actually it's a brand new nail. Wow, I'm wasting a nail. Um, because I want to put the glue down in here. Now, this is where I mentioned when I made the tool handle that I drilled my hole just slightly oversized because what happens is this acts like a, a plunger when I insert this together and I can't get it in there without a lot of pressure and I can even damage the the handle you know the pressure can actually split the handle um, if I hadn't done that so let's see we're gonna put this on here too so it's in the grooves that we cut to key into the handle and I'm just simply going to slip this together hopefully it's going to go See, it's still kind of tight even though yeah it's pressing back and that's because and I hear air bubbles coming out that's because of the plunger action if I let go is it springing out yes yeah, it's springing out on its own that's the pressure in there acting like a plunger so we got to just hold this let the air get out trippy mess I don't want to get that on my handle here okay at some point it'll hold okay and I still got a few minutes okay now it's staying there and it'll rotate a little bit I want to get the alignment I look at the grain on the handle and this is vertical grain this way so I want my blade to be across the vertical grain that gives me the best strength because this is a little bit of a levering tool if I'm levering flat grain I can split the wood easier don't want that to happen so got that the right position let me take a little bit of this extra glue off of here now my nut my ferrule, which is a plumbing nut, slides down over here, and I already threaded it onto the wood once, so the threads are kind of cut into the wood, and they were just cut with the nut itself. I'm going to tighten that on there, and that just adds some nice amount of strength right at the front of this tool. The other thing is the epoxy is soaking into that oak a bit. You know, oak is porous and it's swelling the wood fibers in there. So that's going to be a good tight fit even though, you know, like I said, 23 what was it? Did I say 23 30 seconds, 23 64, I forget. It's just it's like a 64th of an inch larger than my 3/8 inch rod. All right. That's it. Let me make sure my alignment is proper. My grain is that way. Vertical grain, yeah, vertical grain is that way. Blade is across it. Good. There, I like it. Now all I have to do is put a little uh, finish on my handle. And we'll be done. For finish, I'm going to use mineral oil. This is what they sell as butcher block oil. If you go to a hardware store, they sell it as butcher block oil. It's just mineral oil. You can buy mineral oil at the drugstore, really inexpensive. You know, a bottle like this, I don't know, it's just a few dollars at the drugstore. At a hardware store, they're going to charge you seven, eight, maybe ten bucks for the same thing. So I'm using mineral oil. Let's see, I need a little rag here. The nice thing with mineral oil is um, it soaks into the wood, it repels moisture. It's a non-hardening finish. It doesn't leave a slippery, glossy surface, which you don't really want a glossy surface on a tool handle. I see that all the time. You know, you see handles sold at the hardware store. You can buy a hammer handle or shovel handle, and they're all shiny and glossy. Well, you know what? They lacquer those things up to sell them to you because people like shiny things. But you don't want a shiny tool handle. You don't want a slippery tool handle. It's nice if they are just um, oiled, mineral oil, linseed oil, that kind of thing makes perfectly good finish on a tool.
There we go. Look at that. I like it. The other nice thing with mineral oil, you know, is it's, it's harmless. You don't have to worry about it on your skin or anything. It makes it easy to work. All right, we'll let that soak in for a while. Maybe later on I'll put a little more on it. But we're done. We have a nice, new, sturdy weeding stick. Wow, I like it. Here's the old one. See, I made it a little bit longer. Should be good, huh? Feels great. It's a little heftier, but that's good. I gotta go find some weeds.